I'm, I'm getting pretty emotional right now. We're getting ready to go in and uh, do the Wi-Fi in space. What's going to happen then, it's going to shoot out into space and then I will receive uh, a tweet and that will officially be the first commercial Wi-Fi in space. I come from another world. I come from the arts, and I'm a digital nomad. And what does that mean? It means that I'm nomading around the world, very much so, and I've done that in my entire life. And I'm, I can do that because I'm connected. If you think about it, you know, having a human experience is very different today than it was 100 years ago. With, with Brian and, and Soulstar was to come on board and um, help them create a narrative to tell the story about um, a scientist, that a little boy who's now a grown man called Brian that had a dream about going into space and all his life he's pursued to create something or technology and enhance humankind uh, to be able to go into space and now to communicate in space. It's uh, in the surface about uh, one or two inches, uh, although the surface appears to be. Uh... Kids of my generation, we grew up watching the Apollo astronauts flying to the moon. I mean, they used to bring in black and white TVs to our classrooms for every Apollo launch. And so people like myself, that's what we grew up with, and we all wanted to be astronauts. Mm -hmm. Showing us your office. <laughs> Take NASA. two. The NASA badge, let's see it. Yeah. Very nice. That's awesome. This is like from the... This is from the Soviet Union. This is oh, really? the Russian Moscow Aviation Institute, you know. Runway dedication for Spaceport America. And that's Bill Richardson signed it for the first text to space. Ah, that's cool. The text was sent to this. In college, continued to study science and wanted to be an astronaut. And so I wanted to work for NASA. So I persevered, and I wanted to be a commercial astronaut, which was just happening when I was in college. I uh, went to school, went to business school with that idea in mind. Got a job at NASA eventually and learned how to fly things on the space shuttle. Then I went into the business world. So I became an expert in the satellite communications market for people and things that needed to communicate on planet Earth in very remote places where there's no other way to communicate. So airplanes, you're flying in remote areas. Satellites are a good way to provide internet on board airplanes. So then I started thinking, let's see if we could use these same satellites on spacecraft. I want to contract with NASA. So I proposed, hey, let's try this on rockets. We continued to fly higher and higher. We flew on U-2 airplanes, which are like little spy airplanes up to 80,000 feet. That worked. To high altitude balloons at 100,000 feet, that worked. In November of 2013, we sent the first commercial text messages to space, and it worked. So that was on a rocket. Another company called Blue Origin started flying their rockets into space. 
successfully. So we worked with NASA to move our test flights on, on that rocket, the Blue, New Shepard rocket, which is Blue Origins rocket. So we are in Van Horn because there's a launch tomorrow morning out of Blue Origins West Texas Launch Facility, Jeff Bezos's facility. And Van Horn, this area, it's a high desert, and so high deserts are good to launch rockets because you're closer to space, because you're, this is around 4,000 feet in elevation, and that's good. It's, it's less rocket fuel to get to space, as well as normally have very good weather, blue skies, clear weather, as well as it has one of the best, maybe the best bar in town and a, okay, a good gonna, restaurant. So we, we don't need to go into so much detail. What's your, what's your investment in this rocket launch? I own Solstar. I'm an owner, founder, and CEO. And we have been working hard to get our Wi-Fi in space payload together, our space communicator product. And that will be flying tomorrow morning to test the very first privately funded Wi-Fi in space. This will be our spot for tomorrow morning. So the trailer will go here. Morning, guys. <sighs> yeah, so I'm right outside the, the launch pad, and that's where we're going to send up the, the, the new Shepard tomorrow and see if, if Wi-Fi in space will become a reality. Um, you can see some of the people setting up for tomorrow's launch. We're going to be here around 6 o'clock in the morning. Uh, watch the sunrise and then we're gonna watch the rocket launch and hopefully land again and it just makes me feel that I'm closer to to being able to be a nomad in space a digital nomad in space I mean how cool is that The biggest thing is that it connects people in, to, to their family and friends on Earth. If you're flying into space, it looks great on TV, right? But it's a very harsh environment, very dangerous environment still. And, you know, the astronauts that have flown that are flying, what they love most, a couple things. One is, is watching the Earth from space. The other thing is communicating with friends and family. And so that's what our technology does, basically. First you have the transportation, the rockets that are going to space, then you need communications. Well, this, this uh, uh, came to us uh, in, in very stark and clear terms um, after the first accidents away from planet Earth when we lost crew. Uh, there was a phrase uh, that all of us are scared uh, uh, to death to hear, and that is loss of link. You are unable to have a contact with uh, your mission uh, that is perhaps uh, millions of miles away. Uh, loss of link equal to loss of mission. Uh, one of the important aspects of Solstar's technology is that we're enabling other people and researchers to 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 get back better scientific results from their research in space because it's all about data. They need to get data back from their research that's in space. And so SOSTAR allows them to do that as well as interact with it two way, like real time. So, and that's really critical. A lot of space experiments fail because they're up there and then you can't, you can't reach them. As we're moving more into space and uh, having a sustained uh, position in, in space, Wi-Fi will be super important part of it because we humans, we communicate. And it's not only for humans, it's also when you have experiments in space, you can communicate with the experiments, see what's going on with the experience in real time and not having to wait for the vehicle to come back to Earth or your space station. It's actually, it's connecting. It's connecting us which is what we like. We like to be connected. Any last words? Um, wish me luck. <laughs>
Very good luck, but I don't think you need it. I feel that you feel you you're very very prepared. Yeah, we are very prepared. So. Okay. So, I guess we should wish uh, Skywalker good luck. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be it's gonna be a great ride for him. It should be pretty smooth too. Okay. Yeah, the weather looks good. It's clearing up. But guys. It's pretty. We have a beautiful little, little bit of clouds, but they're going to disappear. All right. Let's All go right. Ahead. So basically, we we had kind of predicted this might happen because of some things that were outside of our control that we knew were going to happen, but we didn't think it was going to happen immediately. There was kind of a reboot of the entire system, but that meant that all that they had set up days before, I want to say pre-programmed, pre weeks before, everything was perfectly timed, all fell together. So they had to do everything manually. And I just, I remember I said, it shoots out so fast. I think it takes maybe two minutes for it to reach the Kármán line. So you have to be typing really, really fast to make sure that everything works. So they did it manually. We didn't get our, our internet connection up until we were basically in space. The rocket was entering space and that's when we had to get the tweet out so we had everything programmed to go automatically as much as possible usually we start seeing our internet connection on the laptop behind me we just have data that would be coming up where we were we were like two miles away from the from the launch that day so it was t minus 60 seconds and that's when we expected to start seeing our connection and it wasn't happening come running back in and hoping that we had the connection by then, and then we didn't, and things were happening fast. I was, I was angry. I knew that it wasn't our equipment. Three minutes into the launch, Mark Matosian, our rocket scientist, was looking down, and we were all dejected. Our main programmer was looking down, thinking that it wasn't gonna work. And then I looked at my computer, this computer behind me, and then suddenly data came across. So I yelled, we got data! And then we had to quickly take it off autopilot and we had to rewrite code and then manually put in the tweet language, which we had, the language we had was already approved by Blue Origin. And so we wanted it to be significant and it's in space. We fire the tweet off from our onboard computer up there. And then I went to Soulstar official Twitter feed and waited for the tweet to come through. We had practiced this 50 to 100 times on the ground. Bam, it comes through we got a tweet. and we're in space and it worked. And then that's when Christina KK is on the outside receiving that tweet. Now we need the next huge leap, which is the Wi-Fi to come through. I'm refreshing my my feed all the time here. My Twitter feed. Oh my God! That, yeah, I got a tweet! Ah! First commercial Wi-Fi in space! Yay! It happened! One second ago! That's how fast it's going. So then it comes screaming down, the sonic boom happens. Watch it land. Over, it looks All unreal. It looks like something out of Hollywood. And when that tweet comes through, and then the audience is applauding, and I just, I'm still getting emotional to say thank you for recognizing how historic that point in time was, what we just, that achievement, but also just what it means for going forward, and that it was so hard to make happen. And, and it worked, and we had to kind of take it by the horns and make it happen, and we did. Yeah, we, uh, we Barnett's tend to get a little bit emotional with these sort of things. Uh, I guess me passing the torch on the new generation, I kind of withheld it and also looked towards the future because that's what we got to do now because uh, at this point we don't know what the future holds, but it's only going to be good in my, in my, by my estimate. So, yeah. No, but you're proud. It's your brother, and, and yeah. you know, you guys were building rockets when you were eight years old, and. So what did you feel when you saw it shooting off the ground? I was just thankful that everything was going great. It was going straight up and no problems and 
So it couldn't have gotten any better. And we got the tweet. History, it's broken histories. Thanks to Blue Origin for the two flights this year. They, we were able to demonstrate the first ever commercial Wi-Fi in space. So on April 29th, 2018, Solstar became the very first internet service provider in space. The vision would be that every astronaut and every machine uses the Solstar service and connecting, like I said, people on Earth, making it very convenient for people on Earth to to communicate with things in orbit as well as on the moon, and that we would have a moon base started. It's, it's exciting to think about where this is going forward. These are the building blocks of uh, bringing the, the telecommunications for having not only better satellites that can do more, um, but also helping people express the emotion of what it is to be in space and inspire future generations. Mister, how's it going? I know, so you're, you're used to these kind of things, right? I wouldn't, not used to it, it's still exciting every single time. Well, the, the whole thing about putting commercial Wi-Fi into space, what's, what's your take on that? Yeah, so people love to have connectivity and as more people start to venture into space, they're going to want to have access to their social media and their email accounts and their text messages. So this is just the first step in a long line of uh, more technology coming on board. What, what, so what, what do you predict is going to happen in, uh, in 10 years? I can only imagine, uh, but you know, a fleet of vehicles that are accessing space every day, several times a day. That's what you imagine? Mm -hmm. yep. mm. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> What's your name? Charlotte Schmidt. When did you uh, ride your first airplane? Out of Silverton, Oregon, there was a little airport there, and uh, someone was giving rides in airplanes, and we were probably six. 1935. Mm. She 1930, had her first ride. 1935, and here we are, 2018. Right. Watching rockets. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? And this, I, I had this idea in my head, and it just wouldn't leave. So I feel like it was, it's something uh, bigger than us that, that uh, even that day. When, we, when it was not working. I was saying, help, <laughs> we need help here, you know? And then it's like the clouds cleared and then bam, the data came through. It almost made me cry, you know? Yeah, yeah, right. yeah it was so beautiful. So peaceful. <laughs> it was, it was peaceful, yeah, yeah. But you just felt it in your heart, you know? <laughs> and then it made that noise like thunder. You know, some of us are in a school that says that uh, humanity is precious. Um, we don't know where we came from. We don't know um, um, really uh, everything about how, why we are what we are. But the age-old question uh, arises, why are we here and what is our purpose? But it's just, it's inspiring and it inspires my, my work as an artist to understand, I'll take all this in, and then, you know, again, I'm being the vehicle to communicate their story for another audience that hopefully will get inspired or at least, you know, they can continue a conversation somewhere else and not be fearful, because I'm not scary, and they're not scary when I sit with them. But what I've noticed is with scientists, a lot of them, they really want to have open source. That means they're not so focused on the money, they're actually focused on making the world a better place connecting people, understanding, you know, all this stuff, which is very humane and, and super, super down to earth. Uh, you know, I, I like to think that we should go out and populate the rest of the universe, but we should, we should also take care of this precious uh, blue uh, planet. They have big hearts and they want to do good in the world, which is important to me as well. Yeah, I think we, it's important if you have the opportunity then it's your duty to, to leave the world a better place. As soon as we start talking about uh, changing what it means to be human, we're talking about the singularity because you, if we are going to evolve to be more intelligent, um, we're going to be able to do things that we can't do now. We're gonna be able to think about things that we can't imagine now. And so we start to enter a world that we can't 
quite conceive of anymore. I can't believe we got so high tech so fast. And it's just only getting faster and faster because new technology helps us explore and find and create new technology, so it's exponential. Yeah, all right, I better get back. Talk to you later. Ciao. Actually, a fun factor. In Van Horn, we had absolutely no reception on Earth. I'm like, what the hell? We're sending Wi-Fi to space, I have no reception. There was a, a guy that came over in, a, in his uh, big uh, RV and he had Wi-Fi provided for us. So I, that's how I could get the tweet. I do want to be the first drummer in space. So just to let you know, I'll be flying drumsticks into space soon, the first drumsticks into space. And I want to be the first one to do this.